Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be using this new Thinlets Sizzix Colorize dyes, these super sweet Santa, as well as this really fun starry stencil from Tim Holtz. These are new, these are the only things I decided to treat myself to so far this holiday season for new like actual holiday stamps. Things that weren't on my like design team work anyway. So we're going to start out by die cutting all of these pieces for Santa. And this is probably the easiest colorized thinlets uh, set I've used. Um, from working with scrapbookpal.com, I did do a couple of the other like colorized sets over there. And some of them are very confusing. This one is so nice. So all of the backs are labeled with the color and then they'll have like a scale so there's like a red one a red two and a red three so it makes it really easy to die cut all of your pieces from the proper colors and then you stack them in order starting with one and then two and then three um, the front cover also has like a really good picture to kind of help guide you and I'm pretty sure that Sizzix has on their website like the actual all of the layers broken down for each thing or like somewhere on YouTube if I can find it I'll tag it down below because um, I have used those in the past for some of the ones that I was really confused about but this one I didn't need that for I did all of this I didn't look at anybody else's stuff I just between the markings on the back and the picture on the packaging, I was able to figure this one out on my own, which is amazing <laughs> at this point. So I um, went in with some aged mahogany distress ink to deepen up that layer one, that solid Santa. And then I added just a little bit to layer two and just barely tapped on for layer three. So that way everything is still red and it still all goes together, but we do get some depth and shadow. And the red that I'm using is the Aramina, I think that's how you pronounce it, Aramina Cherry cardstock from My Favorite Things. This has been my go-to red this season and I absolutely love it. These little fiddly bits um, were not the easiest thing ever to glue down um, so I was just trying to be really mindful to not use too much of my liquid glue at one time um, but as far as overall placement like I said these went together really easily um, I definitely really liked this one and that the end result for the amount of work that this takes I think is absolutely amazing I these colorized thin lit things are so detailed and so um like impactful but this one specifically I think is just so adorable and I love that it has the little letters so you can customize it to be you know whatever message you want so I went in with some gray cardstock that I just had a scrap of in my stash and um, laid down the belt I went in with a little bit of um, hickory smoke distress ink just on the edges and on the layer that's going to be the bottom layer of the mittens I just wanted them a little bit darker so that way when we went in with that upper layer where the middle is cut out you see that shadow and again just trying to do tiny little dots of glue and just really taking my time and being careful while I was getting everything together um, so the belt and the boots and the eyes are all cut out of black. Um, I just followed the colors suggestions that were on those back like that are etched into the back of the dies. But of course, if you wanted him to have like a dark brown belt and boots, you could if you wanted him to have whatever color mittens you could. Um, you can really get wild with this, <laughs> especially after the first time you try and you kind of see where everything's laid out. So I cut all of the white layers and the skin tone layers all from white cardstock and I'm going in with Copic colors instead of ink just so that I have more control over where those shadows are going. Um, so I went in with some cool grays really lightly on the kind of beard and hat layer as well as the cuffs of the mittens or the sleeves I guess. Um, and I just, you know, like I said, added a little bit of shading just so they didn't look super flat. And then use liquid glue and my embellishment wand on some of these smaller pieces to lay everything down in place. 
Um, then I added the larger hat and beard section and just kind of made sure that that was lined up between the red hat areas and the bottom where it kind of meets the belt. And then the same for the little pom-pom. I had added some Copics to the under layer just to make sure that when we added the layer on top, a little bit of that shading showed through. But we're also going to add some glitter to this at the end. Um, for the kind of uh, trim that goes around the bottom of the jacket, I went in with, again, those same Copic shades, a lot of like C3, C2, C1. Um, and just added shading to the outer edges and blended that in towards kind of just having a blank white in the middle. And then for the buckle, I wanted this to be gold. So instead of using like a metallic cardstock, I went in with a YR27 um, and I think YR2423 for my lighter shade and just layered those up. And I think this turned out really cute. I like the little bit of pop of color and warmth that this brings to his overall little outfit. Um, for the under part of the face and part of the ears, I went in with R12 so it would look a little bit rosy. And then I used E11 for the top layer of the face um, where it won't have any blush and the main part of the ears. So... Again, same thing, just kind of puzzle piecing this all together. I added in the pinky layer first just to make sure that that whole layer was nice and even and flat with where that facial part was inside the beard. And then I added the upper beard layer and kind of shifted that around until it fit correctly. And then added the little face in last and that's where you kind of get those little rosy cheeks. It's where the top layer is kind of cut away and you see that pink underneath. Um, the ears were a little tricky trying to figure out which one went in which direction just because they're so little. Um, but again, with between the embellishment wand and making sure I didn't have too much glue put down, it wasn't too difficult to figure out. Um, and then I got the eyes glued on, which are out of the black cardstock. I kind of just left them in the dye because they are so tiny. I was concerned I was going to lose them, but I managed to not lose them, which is feels like an accomplishment on its own. Um, while I'm finishing this up, I want to try to remember to make a request. If you are not currently subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It's the easiest way to kind of help support me and my channel. It doesn't cost you anything um, and it makes sure that you get notified when I put out new videos every week. Um, so for the banner, I decided to just go with a simple ho ho ho, but to help break it up and make sure that the letters stood out against his outfit, I did, I cut everything um, from red and white cardstock and I'm going to layer them so that the red acts as a drop shadow. That's going to make them sturdier so they hold up better on my little string. But it's also going to help to make sure between the red and the white that it doesn't matter where these end up situated over his outfit. They will still be easy to read. Um, and I'm using the little paper banner that it comes with to kind of line these up. I started with the center um, hoe <laughs> and kind of put that into place first trying to use the dead center as the space between the H and the O, and then added the ones on either side just to help me make sure that they were pretty evenly spaced out. I still didn't do it perfect, and I don't think it really is like a deal breaker either way. Um, and then once I had those laid out, I decided I wanted to kind of amplify that string feeling. So I grabbed this red and white stripe baker's twine that I have, and I just wound it in between each letter. I went a little crazy on this one and tried to double up and really quickly realized that that was not going to work. So just one loop between each letter was perfect. And I just trimmed it down and used a little bit of liquid glue and kind of squeezed the string against that paper. And after a couple seconds, it was fine. And then I glued that whole little word banner to Santa's hands. And I just, I love how this turned out. But I still think that it would be super cute to do like a multiple step 
sentiment where like the banner says Mary and then underneath is Christmas or the banner says someone's name. I just think that would be so cute. But for my first time trying this out, I really wanted to just leave it with the ho, ho, ho. So I grabbed this beautiful wood grain from the Grain and Grunge um, paper pad from Honeybee Stamps. I love the warmth of this. And you can see originally I thought I wanted a red inner panel, but the red on red was just too much and Santa was getting lost. So I decided to trim down my wood grain panel just a little bit and I'm going to back it with a piece of that red cardstock. And I think that helps to balance out all of the colors on here. So I think I just trimmed a little bit off of each edge. I'm pretty sure it's four by five and a quarter. Um, but obviously do whatever, you know, amount of mat makes you happy. I trimmed my red cardstock down, the same cardstock I used for Santa's outfit. So that's an A2, five and a half by four and a quarter and place that on a side folding white card base. And before I could add my wood grain panel, I wanted to go in with that starry stencil and I'm gonna create a diagonal kind of star formation across my card. Um, I'm going in with the Ranger and Tim Holtz um, crackle white paste. This stuff is so much fun. I did need to go back in and add just a little, a couple extra stars to that bottom left corner. And then while the paste was still a little wet, I'm going in with this new crushed glass chunky glitter from Pink and Main. This stuff is amazing. It's like a mylar glitter and it doesn't make a huge crazy glittery mess on this card. It's just enough. Look how beautiful that is. It's so fluffy. But it's just enough to kind of stick here and there as like a little shimmer to that crackle. And then I set that aside to dry for a couple minutes and I borrowed this sentiment from um, Stamping Bella that says jolly enough for you. <laughs> just thought that was so cute. I stamped it with the matching Aramina Cherry ink from My Favorite Things. And now I'm going in with some... Um, it's like ice lace or white lace stickles. I'll put the exact title down in the description for you. Um, and I'm laying that over Santa's hat and then across the letters just to give them a little subtle sparkle. I really like this stickle specifically because it's not super, super metallic. It really looks frosty. That might be what it is. It might be like frost lace or lace frost or something. Um, so... When my panel was mostly dry, I probably could have left it for another couple minutes, but it was pretty, pretty good. Um, I laid some liquid glue on the back and just kind of carefully pressed that into place. I wanted to pop up Santa so that he um, had some good dimension and kind of was enough to carry the whole rest of the card because he is the main feature here. We're going to get him centered up. Um, nicely and then once he's in a good spot I will press down firmly um, unfortunately I didn't let my stickles dry all the way so <laughs> once I wiped that off and went in with a little bit more stickles to make up for that um, in real life I would have just left this to dry for longer but I was filming it and I wanted to get this done before bed so the last step was to take these gold uh, tinsel uh, confetti sequins from this calls for confetti these are so beautiful and again like the belt buckle I think this gold just brings a really nice warmth um, to the card so I'm gonna scatter three at the top and the bottom doing a large a medium and a small and just kind of tucking them in with those stars and then I'll hold the whole thing up so you can see the crackle on that white I think it's a little bit rustic it goes with the kind of wood grain in the background and I just love how this whole card came together. I hope that you are inspired to try out something new. I hope you are making great progress on your holiday cards. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me today. I will see you back here next week. And until then, guys, happy crafting.